Okay, so today, guys, uh, if you've seen the intro video, you know that I'm taking an old chassis here from a, a Vox AC100 CPH uh, that I built into a Vox AC100 slash two that had some problems and died, and it was my second build. And I decided to gut it since I had the experience of building it, but I wanted to do something a little more complex. So. Uh, today, the first video we're going to be talking about, uh, I've got the power supply that comes in, and this has kind of a built-in power supply filtering setup so that when it comes out here, you're still in AC power, but you've got capacitive decoupling, protection, uh, fuse, and everything in here. That comes into the transformer. The output from the transformer is here. I'm going to remove that from here, and we'll put it onto the board over there. I've got the stand-in for the board here, and we'll talk to that in a second. Uh, but then after that filtering, it'll come back to this inline fuse that will be for the mains, uh, or for the B+, plus. I'm sorry. So we have two fuses, which will be nice. Uh, then we also will have um, the three different stages of filtering here. Uh, this is the choke. So basically this choke will end up kind of connecting between the first two points, as I recall. We can kind of, I'll show the schematic. I may be mistaking that, but effectively um, then the first dropper resistor um, comes between these two, I think. Uh, and these are just the, so this is kind of for the A node. Then this is B, C, D, E, and then I'll have another one on the board for F, as you've seen before. So uh, we have a lot of tie-ins that they already did to the chassis that we'll probably use for my earths like I might use this earth right here for this guy this will keep it closer also for the choke and as I, I don't remember off the top of my head the choke either goes here to here or it might go from here to here I don't remember between those two but uh, we do we will run first the rectification off of this the, the diodes that'll be here and then we'll run them back over to the first node wherever that goes so uh, we have our main power tubes here this is also my heater lines I'll probably I might possibly just remove this and run the heater line straight over to this first tube socket if they will reach. I think they will. So I think I might have done something different in the other case where that wasn't as easily accessible. So that's why I had some extensions on it. But I uh, have the power tubes here. And the way that I've done it, I kind of mentioned the preamp tubes are kind of in a weird spot. So I've cut out a piece of paper that I think is to size. And I you kind know, of punched some holes in it just so I can see where the actual hole is. But this is also what I'll be doing to kind of glue down to my uh, board to drill it out. I've removed all the components just so I can see what I'll be drilling out. But um, the first step really is going to be, um, I'm going to want to fit things in here. So I'm going to go and actually cut this to size. I won't be drilling everything yet, but I'll cut it to size uh, and, and attempt to kind of possibly drill my uh, holes like this, these, and then mount that board onto the chassis just to see if it looks correct. Then I'll mount my, um, these guys as well. i uh, get these guys mounted in and everything kind of set where I want it. I also have a uh, a relay that I'm thinking I will try and fit. It's going to be a little tight, but up. You can't see it very well, but it's just above where my finger disappears off screen up in here. And it's just kind of in this space that's in between where the board sits and that. And it's just going to be a single relay that'll be the channel switching. You generally want those as close as possible to where the actual channel switching is happening. I will also put a small switch on the front somewhere here that will be doing that switching as well. So uh, I'm not sure. I'm, I might put it kind of near, somewhere in here. We'll look at the, I'll, I'll look at the front panel uh, at some point when we're starting to set that up, but that's not for a little bit anyway. So... Uh, but there's the starting point. Uh, the output transformer is already pre-wired with a 4 and 8 tap. It also does have a, uh, I'm sorry, 8 and 16 tap with a switch. It also happens to have a 4 ohm output. I looked up this transformer, but they've just er uh, kind of covered it off. I don't know that anybody would specifically need 4 ohms, but I would at least let anybody know that might want this amp uh, from me at some point that there is an availability of a 4 ohm if they have a, a 4 ohm cab that they want to use. Um, so that is the nuts and bolts of the whole thing. So I will... Uh, get the next step is going to be really me showing you how I've kind of mounted in a lot of this hardware and, and it's fitted in so We'll show you that just after the cut All right, we're back uh, So as you can kind of see in here now, I actually have the board made I've got all the eyelets put in uh, and I also found myself some holes I was able to use some of the existing standoffs that came with the amp uh, and it's now set up, and, and as you can see also, I've got the I, the turret holes coming through here. I have not yet put the turrets in, I mean, the, sorry, the the sockets. So I'll put the sockets in a little bit later, but I just wanted to test fit this guy, make sure it looks like it works and everything fits. So uh, as you can also see, I've got here, well, let me move that. This is going to be the um, power supply relay for, I mean, the power relays that will come off of the, the three volts. Um, it only uses a few milliamps. And so I'm hoping that I'm not going to be pushing this this a little too hard on the 6.3 volts because we'll have the four power tubes and the four preamp tubes, that, and that was the original design of the amp. But it, I think it's like 40 milliamps at the, or something, 20 milliamps that the relay's taken only on switching. So they only draw it for a second when they switch. So I don't think that should tax the um, the system too much unless somebody's slamming the switch button like constantly. And then my actual switching is supposed to happen kind of between these two stages here. And I've got a lot of space, and I'm kind of debating it might not be a bad idea to try and... 
uh, somehow, I don't know. Anyway, I, I'm going to try and I could just set this relay in here about like that, but then it will be kind of fighting with the um, controls. Or I could put it over here, or I could even just put it close to this board here and then just run the actual signal switching wires with some shielding across. Um, but at any rate, I'll have to try and kind of figure that out. We'll come back to you guys a little bit later and do that, but we'll, we'll also figure out the best way to optimally place these guys. Um, one of the options could literally be, for example, to place one about here, because that is going to be about where it needs to be filtering. Um, the defiltering position is here. E filtering position is actually, the, that'll be the one here. So really, it'd be between D and C. I'm trying to remember. So D is about here and C is about here. So that might not be the bad spot, a bad spot for that guy. Uh, this one is going to be for the power tube. So the, um, and then the first, uh, I was trying to remember actually, the first, the, these two, this will be the first two for the first power stage. Then these two, one of them will be A, I believe, and this one, no, actually I'm doing that wrong because I'm trying to think that through. There should be an F as well. Uh, where is F? Um, oh, there's F. Okay, so actually this would go up here. Sorry, I'm just looking at my layout sheet here that's in front of me. You can see I'm talking about there's the C position, D position, F position, E position. Uh, and F and E are interchangeable really at that point because they're equal. Um, and then so B is going to be the screens and then A is the main input. So these two together are A, which would just be going to the power tubes. B here goes to the screens. C will be coming into here. So I might want to just kind of put this guy here because then it will be close to both C position and the screens easily. And then D, E. But again, I've got a lot of room in the chassis. It won't hurt, but also kind of the debate in my head is do I run long leads of power lines and just keep these guys clear over here or do I get them closer to the location of where they're at but uh, I'll, I'll figure that out and think it through and anybody has suggestions please do let me know so it's coming along nicely we've got uh, next few steps very clear I'll pull this back out put those eyelets in I will run my heater wires and I will start um, probably also populating all of my stuff that goes in here getting that set up and ready to go because i don't want to drop this eyelet board in and or, until everything else is pretty much just connected in and ready to go so all right there you have it guys thanks a lot for watching see you next time around